are you looking for ways of creating really interesting marks in your watercolour paintings? Or maybe just interesting backgrounds for doing calligraphy on or card making? Or maybe you've heard about using plastic wrap or cling film to create geometric marks in your work but you're not sure quite how to do it or when it's appropriate. Well that's what we're going to explore in just the next few minutes and I will share a couple of my top do's and a few of my top don'ts to get you on your way. So my name is Liz Chatterton, I'm a professional watercolour artist based in Berkshire and every week I share a tip, trick or technique that I wish someone had told me when I started painting. And this week it's all about using plastic wrap to create really fascinating marks. But I do know lots of people are trying to cut out single use plastic from their lives. So this quick heads up that next week I am going to show you some alternatives that produce very similar marks but aren't single use plastic. I thought we should have a quick look at some examples of it in practice. On this otter I used the cling film for the ripples whereas for this silhouette of a heron I used the cling film for all the background and then painted the heron on top. In this horse the cling film was used more vertically in the main area to really create interesting marks without having to do every hair. Whereas in this um, otter I used it to create the wet fur um, on, on its back as it had come out of the water. And then in this study of autumn leaves I used cling film to create the, the veins before doing lots of negative painting. And then as a final example this other set I used um, the cling film for all those lovely ripples. It's really straightforward. All you need to do is to apply colour to, to wet paper. Let those colours mix on the, on the surface and then you need plastic wrap. I believe Americans call it um, sarin wrap. I got told off I used to call it sarin wrap and of course sarin is some horrible poison. Saran wrap, glad wrap I think maybe and we of course call it cling film and then you need to place it on your wet paint and this is what my first do is do move it around do get the pattern that you want rather than just plunking it in place and, and hoping that the watercolour gods smile at you you've got plenty of time because it's your your paint isn't going to dry quickly even in a, a warm environment because you haven't got any evaporation so you've got time to move these little bits around and get the pattern you want and then the next tip is let it dry don't be tempted to lift the corner and take it off because all those beautiful marks you've made will if it's still wet will just all disappear. Also my next don't is don't use a hairdryer to uh, speed the process up because you will just blow the cling film away and you'll end up with a little snowstorm of cling film around your, your workspace so be patient. If needs be you could put it say on top of a radiator to, to warm things up but it's going to take about half an hour to dry because you have no evaporation. The only way it's drying is through absorption into your paper. So that will be another of my, my don'ts, is don't make it too wet unless you're a very, very patient person. So let's move this to one side because as I say it's going to take about half an hour to dry. What else can we do with it? Well, I think... Um, this sort of texture is wonderful for ripples in water. If you're, say, painting a, a wading bird or something and you need some interesting watermarks, absolutely fabulous for that. Let me show you. 
remember I said don't just plonk it well you can stretch the cling film so that you get horizontal marks and again just move it around on the surface and you end up with absolutely beautiful ripple type marks that would just be perfect for I say a wading bird or for I don't know an otter coming up or fish or, or whatever so horizontal marks just stretch that um, plastic film out sideways and you're good if you want to keep a very clean outline to your cling filmed area you actually need to uh, use masking fluid to keep it clean so I've I've drawn a quick uh, maple leaf here because this cling film texture is wonderful for um, creating veins and leaves or for creating um, what else uh, little branches on trees or, or whatever and with that painted I can now apply a piece of mask uh, not masking fluid my cling film and start to create those interesting marks hopefully safe in the knowledge that it won't go outside of my masking fluid area and again we'll just need to leave that to dry. Another interesting way of applying um, the plastic film is to place it on pretty flat, make sure it's pretty flat and then grab the centre and pull it up. You might even want to twist it a little and you will get the most amazing flower patterns that just paint themselves. So flat, pull up the center, as they maybe twist it slightly as it comes in, just to, to pull up that excess. And you will get these beautiful, slightly abstract flower patterns. So we'll let that dry and come back and look at it. So everything's had plenty of time to dry. So all we have to do is to carefully peel off the um, plastic wrap. And if you were very mindful of single use plastic, you could wipe that over and actually save it. And I know some people do that. Then see what we've got. Let me bring it up closer to you so you can see what a beautiful pattern has been created using that plastic film. This will still be a bit damp. If you use the back of your hand, you can feel there's still some um, water in that paper. So if you were then going to paint on top or you were going to enhance any of those um, shapes, you would need to let it dry a little, little longer. Let's take this one off. Remember we did very horizontal marks. And again, we've got some lovely marks here you might notice you get a slight sheen because where the plastic has pressed it down, you do tend to get a little sheen on your watercolour. And of course, I mean, we did that as, as horizontal marks to, to give the impression maybe of, say, water and, and um, ripples. But of course, if you had them um, vertically, it might be fantastic for giving the impression of bark on a tree or if you put them, let's say, horizontally or, or indeed vertically for a rock face and cliffs and things. Next one we'll do the reveal on was when we made, oh yeah, I like these, the flower patterns by pulling the centres up. And that one particularly is fantastic. So this would be a really great way of, of sort of creating abstract flower patterns 
that you could then work into. It's almost looked like it's painted the stamen of the, the flower and you've got all the petals. So they're fab, fab. And the final one we've got to look at was the leaf. If you remember, I said that the paint can travel along the folds in the plastic film and sometimes that can give you mucky edges. So I put masking fluid around before putting the cling film on. So let me remove this and I'll show you what it looks like. And actually it hasn't given me the effect I was expecting. The paint travelled beyond the masking fluid line I put down and I've ended up with little marks beyond but I think that's really attractive. It almost looks like a print rather than a painting. So that wasn't quite what I was intending, but uh, I'm gonna call that a happy accident. Plastic wrappers produced really interesting vein marks in the leaf, and then we've got a crisp outline with a little bit of paint beyond it. So cling film, it produces all sorts of really interesting abstract shapes into your work. It's one of those techniques that you shouldn't overuse, but just use when it's appropriate. And if you come back next week, I'll explore some other ways that we can gain similar marks without using plastic wrap, maybe using some other materials. See you then. Bye.